fluffy bag, puffy bag, they are all so in trend right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about fluffy, puffy bags. A lot of designers have come up with their iterations on puffy bag, puffy bag, puffer bag. In this new series in my channel, I like to go through some of the best bags for each category. So in today's video, we are going to talk about puffy bags. I have a few other videos, I will link it down below on the other best kind of bags. Towards the end, I will try to do a special mention from a contemporary brand that fits into the day's topic. For example, for today, puffer bags, you might think that it's only a trend, it's not here to stay. You might want to just try out or you are really unsure if you like the puffy trend. You might consider contemporary brands to start you off with. Before investing your hard earned money in this you are not too sure about kind of trend. A lot of people actually associate puffy bags with puffer jackets and then winter. Over here in Singapore, we have whole year round of summer. Nonetheless, I embrace the puffy trend. I love it. I think it's so squishy. I love the tactile feel of everything. It could be because I'm deprived from winter jackets. I hardly feel the winter puffy jackets. That is why I'm very drawn to feeling the puffiness in bags. Actually, does puffy bag really go with winter clothing? Because if you're already wearing a puffy jacket plus a puffy bag, don't you like all look puffed up? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what you feel about it. Disclaimer, in today's video, the bags that I'm going to introduce, I don't own them all. I have tried my best to at least try out in the store. Otherwise, I've tried my best to watch some videos, reviews to do up this list for you. Without further ado, let's go to see what are my picks on puffer bags. Bag number one is Ferragamo Viva Bow Bag. The Viva Bow range is relatively new in the Ferragamo's family. Hardware are tone on tone. It looks very cohesive, blended in, but still with the Ferragamo signature bow on all the items. To me, I find it very refreshing. This Viva bow bag comes in different sizes. It originally comes out with the small and medium and then goes on with the tote bag and it now in the mini sizes. It's a very pretty bag in my opinion. I really love it. I almost, I was so close to buying it because when I look at it in store, it's so squishy, so nice and the colors are just gorgeous, especially the spring colors. The spring colors this year in 2022 it comes in colors like pink, teal, turquoise. Gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Although it's very puffy and squishy, the exterior is actually in calf leather. Calf leather is actually a better choice if you are just worried about taking care of lambskin, lampa leather. The chains are tone on tone. So it's a matching color tone to the leather itself. And it's half chain and half leather. So at the top of the strap, there is leather strap for comfort, which seems to be in trend these days, just to give all of us some comfort instead of the chain hurting our shoulders. One thing I didn't like about this bag is that it actually looks so much bigger than what it actually can fit because it's puffy in and out. I love the look of the Viva Bow range. The, the frills right at the side are so pretty. What I didn't like about them is that the puffiness not only go outside, puff outside, it puff inwards as well. So it actually restricts the capacity in each bag. And at the side frills, they are just frills. You see a bag that is say 20 cm in length. What happens is the frills are just frills, no capacity included. The capacity is only maybe 16 cm kind of thing. Bag number two, Chanel 19. Chanel 19 come in three sizes. That is the small, large, and the maxi. What I have here is the small size. It's very squishy. The puffiness is unlike the Ferragamo Vivo bow bag because it puffs outwards and it's quite flat on the inside. So it doesn't puff inwards. 
the capacity wise is not so restricted. Chanel 19 comes in lambskin. It's like laminated lambskin. It feels very soft, very luxurious, but it doesn't have the very fragile kind of feel to it. And it comes with goat skin. For goat skin, do bear in mind that it just creases more compared to the lambskin. Straps wise, it has this signature leather metal intertwine and in three types of hardware it comes in the rutatium, comes in the gold and the shiny silver. So it's quite interesting with a lot of chain. I don't know whether is this considered the classic line because it does come out seasons after seasons, year after year. If it does, it actually tells us how much these puffy bags are in the eyes of Chanel. It means they are really classic already. They are not really a trend per se. Chanel 19 is one of my favourite bags. I have done my 3 months review and an unboxing of this bag. I will link in the description box down below. Do view it. Bag number 3 is Saint Laurent Puffer Bag. Saint Laurent Puffer Bag comes in 3 sizes. That is the toy size, the small size and the medium size. The small size feels like a medium size bag and the medium feels like a large size bag. Although Saint Laurent's puffer bag puff on from the outside to the inside, capacity wise it's still quite spacious. I guess it's the way that it's made. Instead of sewing very flatly and putting additional compartments inside the bag itself, the small puffer actually fits in quite a bit of stuff. They fit in my phone, my card case, my airpods, my keys, and I think a few lipsticks. That is quite enough. I love puffy line when it's so spacious inside the bag. It's really on my wish list to get a puffer bag. I just cannot bring myself to buy it because I already have a Chanel 19, another puffer bag. Do I need another puffer bag? Bag number four, Bottega Veneta padded cassette bag. The cassette bag comes in the non-padded version that is very flat kind of version as well as the padded cassette version. The padded cassette version is very puffy on the outside but it's not puffy in the inside. Napa leather inside and outside. The padded cassette actually reminds me of Ketupat. For my non-Southeast Asian viewers, you may not know what is Ketupat. I will put a picture here. And when you look at the green padded cassette, versus the ketupat. <laughs> Don't they have some resemblance to each other? Padded cassette is very very puffed up. I think it's more puffy than any of the other bags that I have mentioned. But it feels less squishy compared to all of them. They have sort of packed the, the, the inner puffiness very tightly. So when you feel it, it's very tight, very hard. It doesn't feel that squishy. If that's your cup of tea, you might like the padded cassette. What I like about padded cassette is that it's very puffy on the outside, but it's all flat on the inside. So it can fit your things quite easily. And things doesn't get lost in there because it's very structured. On the outside is leather line, lambskin line. It's very soft, very luxurious, but not squishy. On the outside is the same kind of leather line. Bag number five is Mulberry Softy. Have you seen the softy picture? It's so cute, so soft, squishy kind of look. I have not seen it in person. I can safely assume that I would like the squishiness of these bags. Mulberry Softy is not launched in Singapore yet. Not that I know. I have went to the boutique recently and they told me it's not launched yet. But just by looking at the picture, I can feel that I'm going to like it. It's so squishy, soft. Isn't the name very cute? Outrightly, I really tell you that it's a softy, soft and squishy. They come in three sizes. That is the classic, so it's also a flap style. Little softy, that is also a flap style. And the big softy, that is a tote bag style. It's a vertical tote, so it's something like, I'm quite drawn to it as well. From the description, it's Napa leather and filled with down feathers. Doesn't it remind you of your padded jackets? So I can imagine it to be very soft and squishy. It comes with the signature Mulberry Postman Lock Closure. I think it's very secure. The inside is recycled nylon lining. 
So I will assume that it's not really taking up space on the inside, but just puffy on the outside. And I can imagine the back will be feathery like. Actually so far, I realized puffy bags are not heavy on their own. Uh, unless we are talking about Chanel 19 where all the chains made up the weight. Otherwise, I think generally they are quite light. If you don't see a lot of hardware, I would expect them to be quite light. Just like the Saint Laurent puffer bag. The special mention today from contemporary brand is the drum roll. Coach Pillow Tabby. This isn't a big bag to begin with. And what's more, it's puffy on the outside and puffed right into the inside. So the capacity wise is quite restricted. My personal guess is this Pillow Tabby must be doing quite well. So they have created a new bag looking slightly different from the Pillow Tabby. That is the Pillow Medicine. It's bigger in size. Also a flat back style, but less poofed up. The pillow tabby is also napa leather on the outside. Very squishy, very soft, very... You can't keep your hands off it kind of feel. Comes in two detachable straps. So one is just for the top handle and the other one it's adjustable that you can put it as shoulder carry or cross body carry. It's fabric line. The hardware is quite minimal. The overall weight of this bag is actually not too heavy. You might want to consider this Coach Pillow Tabby just to catch the puffy bag trend. Or you are unsure whether if you really like this trend. So if you are like me, you love the puffy bag trend, do leave me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. If you like puffy bags like me, do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these bags triggers you and is in your English list now. That is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video today. See you next week. Bye!